to the verse-by-verse study of the book of Proverbs. We shall finish chapter 27 today, beginning with a quarrelsome or contentious wife or husband is like the dripping, the Hebrew word here means to a constant dripping, of a leaky roof in a rainstorm. Restraining her or him is like or attempting to restraining the wind or grasping oil with the hand. The key word here is quarrelsome or contentious. Contentious means it's describing someone that's always complaining, moody, continually looking for an argument. They cannot resist, cannot restrain themselves from being critical, judgmental, only looking at the negative, never satisfied, never positive, never supportive, never encouraging. Proverbs warns that living with such a person will be a constant pain in the head and in the heart. So wisdom says, be careful who you choose as a spouse. And next we have a continuation of verse 16, which says we are to be careful about who we associate with. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. This verse is speaking about relationships and the impact those relationships have on a person. The verse is stating that the people we choose to hang out with will literally change us. It will sharpen us. The little word, the literal word in Hebrew means it will change our face, which means it will change who we are, both positive and negative. Scripture teaches and warns that bad company corrupts good character. If someone is hot-tempered, you likely will become more hot-tempered. Or if you choose to walk with the wise, meaning the godly wise, you too will become more wise. But if we choose to a fool or fools as our companions, meaning those that reject God's wisdom, we will suffer from their bad decisions and their bad direction. Again, wisdom is teaching that we should be careful who we choose as our friends because we in large measure can become like them. Next, the one who guards or is diligently cares for or tends to a fig tree will eat its fruit. And whoever protects their master, meaning the person that is a diligent, trustworthy employee, will be honored. The wisdom here is teaching for those that are dedicated, responsible, faithful, loyal, they will never go hungry and they will be honored. Next, we have a profound proverb. As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. First, we should remember during these times that mirrors were very cloudy and did not give a clear, accurate representation of, of someone looking at that, that uh, mirror. But at the right time and in the right light, a smooth body of water would give a true reflection of your face. In the same way, if you really want to see the true reflection of a person's heart, we look at their choices over time, their actions over time. We look at their reputation. Death and destruction are never satisfied, and neither are the human or human eyes. Human eyes. The point of the verse is that evil is never satisfied. And neither is a greedy, envious, lustful eye. Scripture places the same lust of the eye in the same category, the same level as lust, lust of the flesh or the lust of pride. Greed, envy, lust, pride are never satisfied. It's insatiable. They only lead to discontent and emptiness. Next we have the crucible and implied here is the crucible is for silver and the furnace for gold. But people are tested by their 
praise. Now, there are a couple of likely interpretations of this proverb. First, as noted here in the New King James, the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. And a man is valued, is judged by what others say of him, his reputation. So this interpretation follows the, the verse that was in verse 19 and is stating that the true test of a person's character or their value is revealed over time by, by how he or she treats other people and which reflects in their reputation. Or we have a different interpretation or understanding in a New Living Translation. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but a person is tested by being praised. This interpretation is saying that a true test of our character, of how we should be valued, is how we react to praise. Does that praise change us? Does it puff us up with vanity, with pride, which happens to many celebrities or some celebrities? Or do we keep a humble perspective, grounded in the knowledge that whatever good we did was always a result of God and that He should get the glory? Next, Though you grind a fool in a mortar, grinding them like grain with a pestle, you will not remove their folly from them. There are several ways to remove the husk or chafe from a grain like wheat or rice. One way is to use a mortar and pestle, and that's to separate the wheat from the chaff. But the point the author is making, the wisdom is that there's no matter how hard you try, you cannot separate a fool from his or her folly. Folly means arrogance, bad decisions, bad direction. A fool, by definition, has convinced himself or herself that neither either God no, doesn't exist or that they're smarter than God and smarter than you. The last five verses are linked, and they're configured in a beautiful Hebrew poem format. And it's about the business of farming. Recall Jesus often used the farmer and the shepherd in his parables. Be sure you know, you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful, careful consideration or attention to your herds. For riches do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. So we have the first exhortation is to know, to give careful attention to. To what? To your flock, to, to, which means to your responsibilities, to your business. Again, it's about being diligent, to be hands-on, to be involved. To know the condition of your flock also means to know and to sincerely care about the condition of those you're responsible for, your employees, their morale, their training, their work conditions, their goals, their needs. The same is true for a king. Unless that king demonstrates a genuine concern and caring for their subjects, history tells us that kingdom will not last, and neither will a farm nor a business. And lastly, we have when the hay is removed and new growth appears and the grass from the hills is gathered in, the lambs will provide you with clothing and the goats with the price of a field. You will have plenty of goat's milk to feed your family and to nourish your female servants, meaning likely their servants' children. So we have a beautiful ending to this poem reminding us it all begins by paying attention to the little things, to the basics. The simple mundane chore of taking care of the grass each season will ensure that your herd is fed. And if the herd is fed, that means you will be fed and clothed. And so will your family and your employees and their children. Any good rancher knows their first priority is to have good grass. Well, that closes chapter 27. We shall begin chapter 28 next week. Until then, may God bless you and your family with both his grace and his peace. Aloha.